All right. So when we last left our intrepid adventurers, our B cell and our helper T cell had finally met up. Our B cell had finally become active and it's now turned into plasma cells. And these plasma cells can make antibodies. So that's good, but it could be better. So one thing to keep in mind, remember I said that when the helper T cell um, became activated, it started making like lots of, act, uh, of effector helper T cells, but also some memory helper T cells. Well, the B cell hasn't made any memory B cells yet. If this were to stop now, even if your antibodies saved your life, you your immune system wouldn't learn anything. It wouldn't retain any memory of this. It would take just as long the next time. So the helper T cell is going to secrete a cytokine that will turn one of the uh, one of the B cells into a memory B cell. And it's not just one. It's going to turn a bunch of them into memory B cells. Like, not common, but, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. It's going to turn a few percent, like maybe 5% or something like that. So you're going to get hundreds, per, probably, of, of memory B cells that are formed. These are going to keep track of exactly what it is that has happened. And uh, without these, your immune system wouldn't learn anything. But that's not the only thing that's going to happen. This plasma cell, this plasma cell that's the first one that is made, the plasma cell that, that uh, the B cell turned into when it became active, it makes an antibody. That antibody is called IgM. If you haven't watched the video on uh, the different antibody classes, and their uh, functions, you should do so right after this. And what you need to know is that IgM is the first antibody that is produced. It's the only antibody that is produced in the T independent method. Because when B cells become plasma cells, that's what they make. But IgM is not I mean, it's good at some things, but it's not the best antibody for all occasions. You make a bunch of other antibodies, and each antibody is good at doing different stuff. So, what should we do? Well, we've got, right now, all of our plasma cells are making IgM. That helper T cell is going to secrete a cytokine. And that cytokine is going to go off to one of the other plasma cells and cause antibody switching. That cytokine says to this plasma cell, hey, stop making IgM and start making IgG. Or a different class. You know, it could secrete a different uh, cytokine and then say to this, hey, stop making IgM and start making IgA. Or any of the other classes of antibodies that are out there. So the helper T cell, even after it's delivered the second key, still has this super important role to play. And that role is... Uh, it actually coordinates uh, the antibody response. It's what's going to control class switching when you start making uh, what type of antibodies, and it's going to control the production of memory cells. Here's an important thing to keep in mind. Remember that T-independent activation of B cells, right? It's faster you don't have to have that second key. It's the one key method. Do helper T cells get active in there? No. You wouldn't have any helper T cells active. You'd still have active B cells. Would you make memory B cells? No. You don't make memory B cells without the helper. Would you make IgG? 
No. Because without the helper, you don't have antibody switching. So without this helper T cell, your plasma cells are only going to make IgM, and they're not going to produce any memory. And memory is important. So here's a summation of the two key method, basically all on one picture, but it doesn't have any cool animations on it. Um, and uh, yeah, so the other thing that I wanted to point out was the importance of memory. <laughs> so here you see, this is the first time somebody is infected with a particular thing, what's called the primary response. It takes about 10 days, and it's gonna be different for different people and different diseases, but we're looking here, all right? So in here, it's like 10 days before you start making any antibody. It's about almost 15 days before you reach peak IgM. IgM isn't really the most powerful antibody. IgG is usually considered to be the most powerful antibody, although they each have their own specialties. But here, it's not until 20 days out that you reach peak IgG. And peak IgG isn't a super high peak. That's 20 days after infection. Um, infection could have killed you by that point. But if it didn't kill you, you're going to be a lot better at fighting it the second time. So see here... Here is the secondary response. So this person gets exposed to that same thing again. You start making IgM at about five days out instead of 10. And you actually start making IgG at the same time. Uh, IgG takes a little bit longer to get off the ground, but you can see that by 10 days, you're at an IgG level that is equivalent to where you were at before that was your peak in the primary response. And then it keeps going up from there. By 15 days out, you've got, uh, you know, lots more. You've got like twice as much IgG as you had the first time around. Remember at 10, at, at, at 10 days out, at 15 days out, right? So right here, doo -doo -doo -doo, at about that same point here, when you, would, when you would be reaching peak IgM the first time that you got sick, you're reaching a much higher peak of IgG, and you've already had IgM and IgG around to help fight this thing for a while. Now, this is why it's important to get your vaccines.